commented on our video on Social Security when we said that we wanted to wait until Steve was 70 so that once he passed away that I would have a higher payment. This viewer said, well, Steve looked like he may be passing away sometime in the near future because he's a little bit larger than me. Hmm. Imagine that. I'm Sue. And I'm Steve. And, and we're, we're aging, aging joyfully. joyfully. We're talking about BMI today. And BMI was invented in the mid 1800s by a mathematician. Not a scientist, not a doctor, but by a mathematician. So it is the commonly used standard for health in America, but it has many downfalls. It does not take into consideration what is bone, muscle, or fat, or the proportions. So it makes it not the best accurate scale of fat versus muscle in your body. So for instance, an athlete will probably have a higher BMI because they're going to have all muscle and maybe better bones as well. So it's not going to consider that and it would say an athlete is unhealthy. Absolutely, and that's not always the case. Insurance companies charge more for people with a higher BMI. So the interesting thing is, and we're gonna put our sources here below. There are many sources, and I'm sure there's many, many more. We are not health professionals or professional anything, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> We just decided to research it when they thought that Steve would perish before me or have a shorter life expectancy. He is older than me, and in general, men do have a lower life expectancy. There's so many different tables and numbers of life expectancy. In general, women are expected to live three to four years longer than men. We're not gonna go into all of that. And because I am over four years younger than Steve, I will, in theory, live longer than him just on our age difference alone. But in addition to the age difference, I should live another three to four years uh, longer than him. That this person thought that Steve had a much shorter life expectancy because he's a big fella. Big fella, right? What, what did my dad used to call you? Big guy? Big guy. Yeah, my dad used to call him big guy. But we're going to tell you why he may actually live longer than me. So the people who have a higher BMI are tend to be bigger, of course, and you associate being bigger with having more muscle and being stronger and able to lift heavier things and um, just have more muscle mass. One study found that people who had low BMIs actually had low muscle and were very inactive. They had a higher metabolism. They ate less foods and they were, they were less active and they were actually a lot less healthier. Fat does offer protection from injuries. So sadly in America, we just value the thinner the better, but there are many other factors to consider when thinking if somebody is healthy or not you really need to look at a person's metabolic health. Absolutely. So another way of measuring whether you're healthy or not is through a metabolic measurement uh, by doctors drawing blood and having it analyzed in the lab for your blood sugar, your triglycerides, your HDL, your LDL, your waist circumference, all those great tests that you can't wait to get the readings back to see how healthy you are or where there might be some issues with your diet. Other things to consider are your stress level and your sleep habits. Sleep and stress have a big part in your health. Absolutely. You need to get adequate amount of sleep. Go to bed at the same time every night. Sleep for seven to eight hours of sound sleep and then uh, do it all again the next day. And we have a great video on how we switched our bedroom to make it more sleep friendly and the actions that we took to get a good night's sleep. So we have some other health videos out there that help with, with help you get healthy. We've lost weight recently and both of us are off of all of our medications. Absolutely, yes. Being off of medications is wonderful. 
and um, you know that my blood pressure is still in check. Um, my cholesterol will have that checked when uh, we go to the doctor again, um, but it feels good to be off of your medication. This last trip that we went on is the first time that I went on a trip without having to take medication while on the trip, which was pretty abnormal for me since I've been taking cholesterol and blood pressure pills for 30 plus years. We received a magazine in the mail and I opened it up and it turns out the man had a stroke from having a decayed tooth. Mm -hmm. So me having a decayed tooth and no symptoms was extremely dangerous. That could lead to stroke or heart attack or death. So when we look at longevity between Steve and I, sometimes mm -hmm. I think that Steve is actually the healthier of the two. I mean, we could look at my parents for one. My father smoked three packs a day. And when, as a child, we always planned on who was gonna take care of mom when dad died. I mean, we had this discussion our whole lives. We were sure that dad was not gonna be around longer than mom. There was no way, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's amazing what's in the cards and how they play out as to your your life and your longevity. And dad lived 14 years longer than mom. It was just, we never ever would have thought that. So when you make assumptions by looking at people, they're often not correct, right? right we, did a, we did that unscientific study of people on TV and what did we find out, Steve? So in 60s TV shows, they always portrayed the maid of the house as being a big, overweight woman. And then the woman of the house, uh, the wife of whoever owned the house or the star of the show, uh, was always thin and petite. Um, and so what has played out in a lot of those scenarios is that the overweight maid had lived longer in real life than the thin um, woman of the house. Okay, so we started with the Brady Bunch, everybody's favorite. So Alice lived to 88, while Mrs. Brady died at 82. So if we take um, the show that I grew up with, Hazel, which was a great show of its time, um, Hazel lived to 87, and Missy, who was the woman of the house, lived to 76. And so you really can't judge a book by its cover. And then there was Mary Tyler Moore. They always portrayed her best friend Rhoda as being heavy and dumpy. She wasn't really. She was actually just probably normal weight, but they would pad her clothing or whatever. So she wasn't really heavy, but they both lived to 80. Mm, exactly. So there goes my point. You can't judge a book by its cover. What got me to thinking about this was how much they've drilled in our heads that if you're just 20 pounds overweight or not even really overweight, you're on the high end of maybe normal, that you have a short life expectancy. So I looked up Ed Asner, one of my favorites, and he lived to his 90s. And also um, Angela Lansbury from Murder, She Wrote, she lived a good long life as well. So I got to thinking, are they just, um, you know, I don't know, when I researched it, they said that it's the media who portrays the thinner the better. That that's not actually necessarily healthy. A lot of people feel there's a mm -hmm. U-shaped curve in determining health, and, and actually this is true. Mortality has a U-shaped curve with your weight. So curve. here's the U-shaped curve, okay. and that's if you look at the very heavy on this side and the very light on that side, they had higher mortality rates than the people who were just in the middle. So that's normal to slightly overweight middle. Right. This is an embarrassment to the US that we're using such old archaic methods when there are perfectly good methods found in other countries. So a sign of health in the US is the ability to gain weight. If you lose weight without wanting to lose weight, that's a sign of being unhealthy. Now, Steve is overweight in the BMI category. He is not obese. If you are obese, of course, that, answers up. that enters a whole new territory which gets into the unhealthy territory. We're talking about people who are uh, mm -hmm. maybe slightly overweight, but Steve is broad shoulders, so he has good bones. He, he, he's very strong, lifts a lot of, um, he's always working in the yard, lifting a lot of weights. So 
he's rarely sick, yeah. even though men do have a shorter life expectancy than women. I'm seeing more and more women pass away before their husbands. Two of my aunts actually passed away before their husbands and my mother passed away before my father. So I'm seeing that women are, are leaving this world before their time. I'm not sure exactly why that is. One reason my personal thing is that I believe that men get much better health care than women. Steve and I have recently started going to each other's medical appointments, the same doctor, appointments back to back. So I see how they treat Steve versus how they treat me. And they'll order more tests or listen to him much more thoroughly and do much more with him, with the same doctor. And this isn't just my viewpoint. I've seen this over and over again in articles that women do not get the same treatment as men. Additionally, women... Women of childbearing years are especially vulnerable because in this country, our maternal mortality rates have been increasing. For whatever reason, we are having more and more women die in childbirth, which sounds ludicrous in 2023. One reason some people feel that the U.S. doesn't have an ideal life expectancy is the lack of universal health care in this country. So that's going to turn out to be more and more people as health care and retirement becomes more unaffordable. So we're doing what we can. We've changed our diet, exercise, reduced our stress. We have our Zen garden, which we added a piece from Charleston that we can't wait to show you that. And um, we're doing what we can do. Genex plays a big part of it. We hope you've been enjoying our videos. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, notification, and thumbs up. Until we see you again, take it easy.